working to connect a region of over 600 mil bridges between our lands. Welcome to Asian in Focus Weekend Edition. I'm Kaloy Tabunda from the Development Academy of the Philippines. The history of Brunei Darussalam, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, East Asian Growth Area or the BIM IAGA began as a main agenda item in the high-level talks of then President Fidel B. Ramos with his BIM counterparts, heads of his states in 1992. The endorsements and confirmations of then Indonesian President Suharto on September 1993 Sultan Haji Hassan al Bolki of Brunei Darussalam in November 1993 and Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad in February 1994 paved the way for the BIM IAGA inaugural senior officials meeting and ministers meeting in Davao City, Philippines on 24 to 26 March 1994. The Brunei Darussalam Indonesia Malaysia Philippines East Asian Growth Area or BIM IAGA is sub regional economic cooperation designed to spur economic development in the lagging sub-economies. Established in 1994, BIM IAGA covers the underdeveloped and geographically remote areas in the four member countries. It covers the entire Sultanate of Brunei Darussalam, nine provinces in Kalimantan, Sulawesi, the island chain of Maluku and Papua in Indonesia, the federal states of Sabah and Sarawak, and the federal territory of Labuan in Malaysia, and 26 provinces from Mindanao and the province of Palawan in the Philippines. With the end goal of narrowing the development gaps among its member states, the BIM IAGA economic cooperation focuses on four strategic pillars. Among these are enhanced connectivity, food basket strategy. This pillar aims to facilitate cross-border movement of goods, services, and people by ensuring all the necessary physical infrastructure and software development are in place to achieve land, sea, and air connectivity within this region. The second strategy was aimed to conceive to sustainably utilize the natural richness and biodiversity of BIM IAGA's resources to contribute in narrowing the development gap, alleviating the poverty, and promoting food security in the sub-region. The third is tourism development. This prioritizes community-based ecotourism in order to fully showcase and conserve the natural and cultural resources of the sub-region while also helping develop the lagging communities of the member countries. And fourth, environment. Taking off from the member countries' commitment to sustainable development, this pillar ensures an integrated protection and management of the sub-region's natural resources and biodiversity by focusing on environment-friendly programs and initiatives. To give more light on this topic is our guest today, Ambassador Jose Romero, Jr. Ambassador Romero is a product of the English public school system and the University of Trinity College of Cambridge. After finishing his master's with honors in England, he continued with his postgraduate studies in economics at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. Ambassador Romero also received his doctorate degree in development management from the University of Asia and the Pacific, where he is a professor, professorial lecturer in political economy. He has also lectured in Ateneo de Manila University and the Asian Social Institute. Ambassador Romero also served as assistant publisher of the Manila Bulletin and contributed to the Financial Times of London. He is currently the assistant treasurer of the Asian Institute of Journalism and Communications. In the service of the Philippine government, he started as an economist in the Department of Economic Research of the Central Bank of the Philippines and afterwards served as Director General of the Con Congressional Economic Planning Office. As Chairman of the Philippine Coconut Authority in 1987, he was concurrently Under Secretary of Agriculture. Later, he served as a board member in the United the Coconut Planners Bank and President of the Coconut Investment Fund Management Company. As Chief of Mission in Rome, he was concurrently Executive Director to the UNCTAD Common Fund for Commodities and Permanent Representative to the Food and Agricultural Organization and the International Fund for Agricultural Development. In the business world, he serves as chairman of Ab Abacus Consolidated Resources and Holding Company. And he also sits in the Southeast Asian Advisory Board of Rolls-Royce Aerospace and Power Corporation, 
where he serves as senior consultant. He also sits as chairman and president of the Philippine Council for Foreign Relations and the Asian Center for Study of Democracy. Good day, Ambassador Romero. Thanks Good for day, being sir. back yes. this program Thank you. again. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Uh, <coughs> our first question before we go to the four strategic pillars of the BIMP Yaga economic uh, cooperation. What is the common thing within this region, I mean, the, the, the provinces, the regions in these four countries that made, uh, that made organizing into a growth area, a common growth area feasible? You know, it's not well known, but actually the leaders and the uh, uh, community in these countries are probably closer to each other than they are to us. Okay. Um, and I'm talking to the Mindanaoans, for example, mm -hmm. the Muslims, Mindanao, particularly. You know, uh, historically, the uh, an ancestors of the current Sultan of uh, Brunei, Sultan Bolkia, mm -hmm. was uh, the Raja of Manila. <laughs> when was, Manila was still, when was still a Muslim, uh, Muslim uh, thing yeah. for the Spanish uh, mm -hmm. conquistadores. And he is uh, related to the Kiram family of uh, the Sultanate of Sulu. Sulu. And that is the reason why uh, when the uh, um, Burkia family was besieged by their enemies mm -hmm. in Brunei. Mm -hmm. The Kiram, the Sultanate, sent forces there to uh, help their cousins. Yes, in, so they're, uh, they're cousins. They were because cousins. of their uh, blood, mm -hmm. blood ties, which uh, repelled the invaders. Mm -hmm. And as a uh, token of gratitude, the um, Sultan of Brunei. Sultanate of Brunei gave Sabah to the Philippines. To the Sultan of Sulu. To the Sultan okay. of Sulu. Who That's later why on ceded it to the uh, Republic, Republic of, of the Philippines. Philippines. The, yeah. this, is, this explains the claim of the Philippines uh, which over Which explains Sabah. the claim, exactly. So it has a historical basis after all. That's right. Historical and legal yes. basis after all. So you can mm -hmm. imagine that the, um, the Kirams mm -hmm. consider the Bolkias as uh, mm -hmm. uh, close cousins. Mm -hmm. And uh, more so than, let's say, the uh, Aquinos uh, of uh, Malacanang. <laughs> yeah, because I remember uh, when I was much younger, <laughs> years ago, I was assigned in Tawi Tawi by my wow, former yes. boss, and <coughs> visited this community in somewhere I think in South Ubian. It's a municipality in Tawi Tawi, and my staff there told me that the village chief there yes. in South Ubian was actually a Bolkia and is a cousin of the Sultan, the Sultan of uh, Brunei. Yes. So, so that explains. So it, it really has a. There is really a more than more than any relation. This really blood relationship um, among these peoples in, in this yes, area, yes, so yes, this yes, area yes, of the so. world. So I mean, they were carved out by uh, political mm -hmm. exigencies mm -hmm. and all that. But actually, these are uh, people are very uh, closely knit by blood mm -hmm. ties and cultural mm -hmm. ties mm -hmm. and uh, even economic ties. Okay, we, we go now to the strategic pillars of the BIM Yaga economic cooperation. One of them is uh, enhanced uh, connectivity, so facilitate cross-border movement of goods, services, and people. So, so can you comment on this, or what has happened, or what is happening now? Well, actually, the uh, the idea uh, that first uh, was broached by uh, I think uh, you mentioned President Ramos Muffin in the Ramos, yeah. mid '90s was um, intended to facilitate the flow of goods and services mm -hmm. uh, among. If uh, if you have a map here of the the Bim Piaga, mm -hmm. you will see uh, the the need for connecting this, the, and it's not a very big deal because. You know, um, Manado, or the of Sulawesi, mm -hmm. is closer to Jansan mm -hmm. than Jansan is to Manila. Yes. So that's how close it is. And as you you, you said earlier, mm -hmm. the um, from Sulu to uh, Kota Kinabalu or Kota Sandakan, Kinabalu. Or Sandakan. Or areas, we it's just a boat take, ride. If we just take a boat ride. It's a boat ride. To, uh, you know? Sandakan. So you can imagine if you connect this through fast ferries mm -hmm. 
and even a bridge, uh, maybe. And there used to be a regular flight between Davao and Menado. Yes. Although until now, I think the uh, trading is going on be, uh, between the traders in these two areas. Yes. So if we can just bring goods and services mm -hmm. together through uh, sea and air, mm -hmm. and that will facilitate the development of industry and agriculture. Okay. In the area. Mm -hmm. The second is uh, the food basket strategy conceived to sustainably utilize the natural richness and biodiversity of the Bimpiagas resources to, you know, to contribute to narrowing the development gap, yeah. alleviating the alleviating poverty and promoting food security. So how rich is the uh, uh, food production here in this area? Well, if you t take uh, Sulawesi, Sabah, and uh, Mindanao together, this is the biggest uh, bird basket uh, mm -hmm. or rice basket, if you like, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, the, in the, uh, the whole of the Asian continent, mm -hmm. which could feed uh, the population, the 45 million population of the BMP Eaga, as well as, uh, you know, areas outside of the region. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course... Uh, and that is Fisheries, of course. Fisheries, so. yes. They say the joke is that the fish are dying of old age. <laughs> in Tawi Tawi. I used so to hear that joke celibus, before. Yeah, the celibus the fish there are dying of old oh, age. Mm, um, <laughs> right. <So it's>, mm. <laughs> and then, uh, if you can imagine, they can produce all of the halal foods mm -hmm. in the area to feed all of the Muslim communities all over the world. Yeah, all over the world. All over the world, uh, yes. Yeah, in Middle East and all of mm. these things. Yeah, considering know. that this area is really... Yeah. Is really uh, Muslim area. It's Muslim area. You have Indonesia yeah. and then we have, of course, South, right. uh, Southern So the potential is really fantastic for the mm -hmm. area. Yeah. And then uh, tourism development. So prioritizing community-based ecotourism, showcasing the natural and cultural resources of the Sabrian. I remember that place, uh, Tawi Tawi, Sulu, and uh, the Saba area. This very beautiful area. Yes, yeah. yes. You have the mountains, you have the sea. So yes. Well, first of all, the political will, you know, for mm -hmm. this thing to really develop tourism. And the other side of tourism is uh, security. Mm -mm. Peace and order. Peace and order. I mean, no more uh, kidnapping, hijacking, uh, all of that sort of thing. Secure the area. Mm -mm. And with the three nations cooperating to secure the area, it cannot mm -mm. fail. Mm -mm. You see, you need uh, n n n the Navy there, the patrol boats, you know, the armed forces, and on on, on the borders, et cetera, et cetera. So this is to be a uh, pirate-infested quote unquote yeah. pirate infested area. Uh, yeah. How do you think? And the longer term solution, of course, is uh, food, clothing, and shelter mm -hmm. for the population there because uh, livelihood is a big deterrent to, you know, uh, other uh, illegal activities like mm -hmm. uh, kidnapping and so mm -hmm. forth. You know. You're saying, and in fact, that uh, if we go back to the, if we develop these uh, economic opportunities, then of course they would, they would now refrain from all of these uh, of course, terroristic yeah, activities. Yeah, give them food, clothing, and shelter, mm -hmm. and uh, they'll be happy farmers. Mm -hmm. Will be peace loving. Mm -hmm. And then uh, environment, uh, taking off on the members' country's commitment to sustainable development, ensures an integrated protection and management of the region's natural resources and biodiversity. Yes, this is where the the uh, Navy will have an important role to play, so that all of the corals in the area, mm -hmm. the rich corals and mm -hmm. all the things will be, I think the, the, the forestry will be preserved, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. by, uh, by, the, 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 by the armies in the region, by joint patrols and mm -hmm. all that sort of thing, and uh, so it's, uh, secure, secure the uh, natural resources. And then, of course, in, within this area, we have uh, some of the most diverse uh, in, in environments, by diverse, by diverse environments, yeah. Mount yes. Apple, which unfortunately is undergoing forest yes. fire right now. Yes, yes. Mount uh, Kinabalu, uh, the, the highest Kinabalu, peak in uh, yes, this yes. part of the world. Yes. Uh, okay. These are volcanic areas, it means very fertile mm -hmm. lands around it, which okay, can so be developed for agriculture. So these, they could really be developed for tourism yes, potential. Yes, and, and for tourism. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, so as a whole, do you think the, these, these uh, strategies were conceived in 1994? Are they still uh, relevant at this point. It's even more still. relevant today as the ASEAN uh, mm -hmm. begins to roll out mm -hmm. because now we are part of the ASEAN economic community mm -hmm. and I think that uh, this uh, sub-region, this uh, growth area mm -hmm. 
is the most viable actually mm -hmm. of all of the uh, regional arrangements, uh, mm -hmm. sub-regional uh, mm -hmm. arrangements in the whole of the ASEAN. And of course they have implications for the peace in order situation. And they have very, very important uh, sig oh, okay. significance in the um, mm -hmm. sort of BBL issue that we have today, which we'd like to discuss per okay. perhaps uh, later. So in short, you're saying that we have to uh, look back at look at the BIM Piaga arrangements again and make sure that the plans that were hatched, the strategies that were hatched in 1994 are still being implemented up to this period. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, we continue with our discussions with Ambassador Romero. This time we'll go, we're going to talk on the merchandise trading area in the region. Uh, the Bimpiaga's total merchandise trade grew at an annual average rate of 14% between 2009 and 2013. Total trade in 2013 increased by 0.88% and was valued as 166.34 billion US dollars with total surplus of 72 billion dollars. So we can see that uh, trading in this area is really very dynamic. Where, where can we attribute this growth and what are its implications for the future growth of the uh, Asian region? Yes, well, um, the uh, intra-regional trade, there is uh, actually even uh, uh, more than the intra-regional trade uh, between the uh, um, because there are two ASEANs actually. Mm -hmm. One is the Mekong Delta ASEAN. Yeah, and Vietnam. With Vietnam, Thailand, Laos, which are Cambodia, more or less okay. the, the uh, Chinese uh, mm -hmm. thing. And the, Malay, um, uh, the Malayan uh, portion, which is the Mafilindo okay. thing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there are, uh, um, you will be surprised to note that uh, the copra, the coconut in uh, Davao mm -hmm. uh, came from Sulawesi, the best varieties came from mm -hmm. Sulawesi. There, there's a lot of trading. We uh, import uh, import uh, the copra <coughs> um, from from this area. And, so uh, our coconut <coughs> then actually came come from Sulawesi. No, but but uh, you see, there there's a lot of processing going on now okay. in Davao, and it's not enough in the oh, area. Okay. You know, so the raw so materials come so from the Sulawesi. Raw materials uh, mm -hmm. augment augment. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have we have a lot of things. Um, mm -hmm. But that, but the mills there, the coconut oil mills, for example, uh, uh, sometimes are short of raw material, so they mm -hmm. import. But the palm oil uh, from Malaysia. basically come from Indonesia and Malaysia, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, we are now using more palm oil. Uh, you might be surprised to note in our cooking oil. <laughs> then we use coconut oil yeah. because it's cheaper. I see that in the grocery packages. Uh, uh, co cooking oil is really palm oil. Where is the coconut oil here? <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's cheaper. Palm oil is cheaper than coconut cheaper. oil. So what they do is they blend. blend, they blend. Palm Minola, oil. for example, where I was the uh, <laughs> president of at one time, mm. <clears throat> it's now blending. You see more because it's uh, more affordable okay. <clears throat> for the housewife. Although they say mm. that coconut oil is healthier. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, if coconut oil is um, probably healthier, yeah. Mm. It has more lauric uh, oil okay. in it. And, uh, so you have coconut, palm oil, what, what else are the major uh, products here? Uh, the um, thing... Uh, rubber, how about rubber? There's a rubber there, mm. and of mm. course, I don't know whether they import uh, energy from uh, Sabah, um, because mm. there is uh, a lot of... Uh, uh, of course, Shell is there pumping mm -hmm. oil uh, from the oil, and mm -hmm. I, I think it's possible that uh, they may be importing uh, mm -hmm. energy from Sabah. Uh, tuna. 
Well, tuna is common to all countries. Uh, I think we uh, we uh, hijack from each other <laughs> the tuna flows. <laughs> yeah, into I heard this. Into uh, the I heard this cheese miss that the tuna that, that are being sold in Davao actually came from Indonesia. <laughs> yeah, and probably <laughs> the Indonesian come from from, <laughs> from the, the Philippines. Philippines. Yes, anyway, yes. Anyway, so uh, obviously the idea there of are being no border <coughs> pass anyway between among tuna. But the, <laughs> the bimpeaga mm. can ar arrange for an orderly. Mm you know, mm -hmm. sharing of the mm -hmm. raw materials mm -hmm. and the share resources from the sea. So, uh, <coughs> how about other manufactured goods? Are they manufactured goods in this area? Well, actually, when I was in uh, uh, the uh, CIAF, which mm. is the, uh, the, uh, the uh, coconut arm of the UCPB, uh, the idea was actually to produce a cocoa chemical center in Jensan or mm -hmm. Davao, mm -hmm. importing the, the palm oil requirements from the uh, neighbors, like uh, Indonesia and things. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's the palm kernel oil, not the palm oil, it's yes. uh, palm kernel oil, which is 10% of the oil. So what happened? Uh, and then, uh, but um, the problem is the, the our neighbors want to have a longer lease on land. Mm -hmm. So instead of 25 years, they want maybe 50 years. And in fact, they, they want to own it if possible. But our constitution does yes. not allow for land ownership. And uh, for some reason or other, the, uh, the, the uh, authorities were slow in approving this uh, automat <laughs> automatically uh, mm -hmm. lease. Mm -hmm. Because when you plant uh, plantation crops, you, know, you, need, you need a lot of years to recover your capital. Why Davao is <coughs> the processing uh, center? Why not in Indonesia or uh, uh, Well, uh, Davao for our own interest, we would like to, uh, oh. to have it uh, there. Okay. Well, we, this can be located anywhere, of mm -hmm. course. And it is being located now mm -hmm. in these areas mm -hmm. because there, there's uh, more supply of uh, palm mm -hmm. kernel oil in these areas than there is supply of coconut in our area, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's just one aspect of uh, industrialization, but there'll be a lot of industrial complementation that can occur if these three really cooperate uh, closer. I mean, let's Food processing would be uh, one. I'd like to reiterate what you mentioned before. So uh, trading in this area is greater than the, figure, the figures from the Mekong uh, Delta region. Oh, the intra-trade, inter inter inter-regional okay. trade. Yeah, there's okay. more going on between these things. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in the other areas, I think the supplies of uh, the uh, Laos Cambodia sort of goes outward, mm -hmm. outward the region. No? Mm -hmm. <coughs> when one mentions Bim Biaga, uh, for, any, for somebody who is more or less familiar with the area, uh, one uh, thing that comes to mind is the barter trade. Yes. How, what happened to the barter trade now? Well, the barter trade uh, flourished during the um, late 40s and 50s and mm -hmm. uh, 60s. This was the no dollar trade. This was okay. the barter uh, licenses given mm -hmm. by the central bank to these Moro traders who were already trading illegally. Illegally. <laughs> because we remember that we had import and exchange controls. Mm -hmm. And the borders are quite porous and mm -hmm. it's really difficult. So to miss it. If the government shares in this thing, we might as well give them a license, even if maybe only a portion mm -hmm. of the trade was captured by the, uh, by the, the barter uh, arrangements, mm -hmm. etc. But they cashed in on the uh, differences in uh, the official rate and the, uh, bar and the black market rate. So there was a premium. Uh, but when we devalued in the uh, 1962, yes. Uh, 1962, and the, uh, we had a uniform exchange rate at uh, 390, 421. The premium on the barter trade disappeared, and it was no longer uh, viable. The thing. So this was 40s, 50s, 60s? Yeah, up to, uh, up to uh, Makapagal, yeah. And these were, these were the periods when there was relative peace and prosperity? Yes, because there was a lot of money. Okay, uh, and then controls uh, came in. And then the control came in in uh, 1962, 
and that, that uh, disappeared. So they were back to uh, some uh, other activities. So that started, <coughs> you know, the peace and order problem in... Uh, yeah, you will recall that it... Uh, Can you really uh, make a direct link between what happened to the barter trade and the emergence of this uh, peace and order problem in, in that part of the, the Well, uh, mm, there's no uh, correlation, strict correlation, because actually mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the devaluers did not kill the, the trade. The okay. trading, the trade uh, went on uh, on, on, on a legal basis and on mm -hmm. a more official basis. Mm -hmm. So there must have been other reasons for the for the thing. Maybe um, foreign intervention, maybe <coughs> might be a factor. Can you, can you uh, expound on that? <laughs> well, actually, that's why uh, the the reason for Bimpiaga is try to promote the political stabilities in the area which is driven by uncertainties, political mm -hmm. uncertainties. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think Saba is related to these uh, secessionist issues. It has always been. Yes. The Bida massacre, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So why why are why are is there a secessionist movement in the thing? Who is uh, promoting this? Who's arming the uh, people there? Yeah. Uh, if you ask our um, you know, military, they will say that uh, these arms come from uh, outside mm -hmm. the region. And who is outside the region is interested in this thing? Uh, so the Saba issue comes again into the fore. Mm -hmm. you know? So if uh, we can bring uh, the Mafilindo community together again, if you remember, uh, in uh, 1962, and again we go back to the, the you know, yes, yes. 1962, we had the Manila Accord Which because was? the Manila Accord um, brought peace in the region. The Manila Accord brought together Abdul Rahman mm. and Suharto. That's the Bafilindo thing. Yeah. Abdul Rahman, the Indonesians and Malaysians fought over Sarawak. Mm. The Philippines and Malaysia were going to fight over mm. Sabah. So Makapagal said, uh, let's not, uh, let's put this issue in the back burner. Mm -hmm. Let's sit down and make this a zone of peace and prosperity. Let's create the Mafilindo, now the ASEAN. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, that uh, created uh, some sort of uh, thing for a while, you know. But then uh, the, the peace was tenuous because there was a lot of unrest mm -hmm. in, in the Sabah, in Sabah, you know, the Sabahans were not uh, very happy that they would enter the uh, Malaysian Federation yes. and not as equal partners. Mm -mm. And yet uh, they, s they claim to, so, and I agree with them, that they're contributing m a lot more yes, yes. to the thing than what they're getting in mm -hmm. return. Well, that this is their argument. Think. At the same time, our, our Muslims here were also chafing because they don't say there was a benign neglect. Yes. So the two, the, the two together thing created some tension in the area, mm -hmm. which the, the Malaysian spec would create to a secession, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and so So if there, there is a sick peace in the area through development, okay. uh, that, that will calm the tension in the area. That's why BIMPIAGA is very important. Uh, but, but can we safely say, mm -hmm. forgive me for this, that if the barter trade can be more, uh, if the practice can be continued in a more, you know, more relaxed, uh, with more relaxed controls, it will bring about greater peace in the area. Well, actually, uh, as an economist, I, I am not a promoter of barter, okay. actually. I am a promoter more on free trade mm -hmm. than, than barter. I think uh, free trade is, uh, is a better uh, pos um, form of uh, trading. Mm -mm. than barter, because uh, barter is a, a non-exchange, I mean, mm, <laughs> you yes. know, it's good, good to good, that's primitive, you know, mm -hmm. so we think, uh, so the idea is to come up with a free trade area, mm -hmm. which I think will be very useful for the sub-region. Okay, <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much, and uh, we will be right back.
Okay, we continue with our discussion with Ambassador Romero. And this time we're going to talk on the third strategic pillar, which is uh, tourism. Uh, domestic tourists continue to be the backbone of the Iago tourism industry, accounting for 70% of total tourist arrivals in 2013. Between 2009 and 2013, foreign tourist arrivals have been growing at an average rate of 7%, while domestic tourist arrivals have been declining at an average of 13% annually. So how rich is the tourism potentials of uh, Bimpia? Oh, it's great. Uh, it's just the connectivity. And of course, it's not very easy to go. For example, mm -hmm. from the boat to Menado, mm -hmm. from uh, Menado to, to, to Brunei, mm -hmm. you know. But if you can have a develop a sort of a, um, air, sea, land uh, connectivity, mm -hmm. then that will spur tourism because there's just so much to see mm -hmm. in the area. Mm -hmm. That means to say you need a regional airline sub-regional airline. And there used to be regular flight between Davao and Manada. I think it's Borak Airline, but they Borak discontinued airline, it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you see, ago. you need a uh, fifth freedom flight, mm -hmm. probably. So, because mm -hmm. you can't make money mm -hmm. just there. So it would be like Manila, uh, Manila, Davao, Manado, mm -hmm. uh, Sulawesi area, to make it really profitable. So there's no shortage of uh, spots to visit but, but it's really the yeah, transportation bit there's a lot of infrastructure requirement for mm -hmm. example you need air, airports mm -hmm. uh, with with navigate you know mm -hmm. or air navigation equipment you need uh, faster boats you need security above all yeah above all i mean that's really the thing once uh, that area is secured then uh, the tourist potential is tremendous mm -mm. Mm -mm. yes and with all these uh, continuing kidnappings yeah. by the, the it's a chicken and egg now people don't want to invest because of kidnappings mm -hmm. and you cannot stop kidnapping if there's no investment if you don't have uh, so because once you have tourism you have security because all airports will be guarded it's uh, port and all that so, so it's political will uh, to me okay so of, uh, for example we have now an uh, we, for example we have an official who has the political so how should he or she proceed with this thing now okay so and i can imagine a situation where okay we say uh, on the word go we open up the office in the in uh, brunei the uh, the capital of brunei and uh, which was uh, 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 Begawan, uh. Uh, yeah, which was a uh, big hand pick to be the headquarters of yeah. the bimpiaga mm -hmm. okay so from there you are adjacent to the uh, sub uh, Region, offices uh, uh, in Manado, mm -hmm. in Davao, so forth. And then uh, le let all the, uh, uh, you get rid of all the uncertainties, you come up with the, actually the ADB has already come up with 150 uh, protocols, mm -mm. you know, to, to get this moving. Okay. All you have to do is to, to follow the, the roadmap of the ADB to start with, you can can up one of your own, mm -hmm. and then you 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 thing. But I am told that not all of the partners are uh, ready, willing, and able at this time. Why? <laughs> <coughs> For uh, I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> so it's I think it's the new administration uh, should get together like like Macapagal did in 1962, mm. come up with a Manila Accord two. Uh, bring in the, uh, the the leadership in the neighbor thing on the for the three countries, mm -mm. You know? and then said, "Look, this is good for peace. This is good for uh, development. Let's do it." But the problem now is uh, the Asian community is not even an item in the you know in the agenda in the platform of any of the candidates running for and office. That's why you have this program. <laughs> Hopefully so they'll I pick hope up they this pick program, <laughs> program and, uh, mm -hmm. and but, uh, but uh, you said uh, earlier that uh, there's no problem with the uh, with the places to visit. It's really m more on the peace and order uh, yes, situation. Yes, uh, because some of these items can be, think, for mm -hmm. example, the 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 the, mm -hmm. the cost for you know their mm -hmm. cost in flying in and out of mm -hmm. things. You know? That can be resolved. Well, what about the piracy uh, situation? The piracy, well, you have joint uh, na naval patrols, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. the thing, by the three mm -hmm. navies, mm -hmm. by the four navies. Mm -hmm. 
and that, that should not be uh, very difficult, mm -hmm. you know. The, the port facilities must be improved, mm -hmm. and the charges mm -hmm. uh, for incoming, outgoing cargo and services, mm -hmm. uh, that can be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, normalized, that can be uh, facilitated, mm -hmm. it can be reduced. All that sort of thing. These are the administrative matters that can be addressed. Okay, so at this point in time, there's really a need to further develop the tourism potentials in this area that would, of course, give more economic opportunities for the people in the area and hopefully solve the peace and order situation yeah, in yeah. this area. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, we continue with our interview with Ambassador Romero. Uh, this time we're going to talk on the implications of the peace process because we're, to the Bimpiaga because we were saying earlier that uh, much of the development in Bimpiaga will really depend on the, uh, you know, the cessation of, of the peace problem in, in, in Binanao particularly. So, uh, what do you think is the implication of the ongoing peace process, the BBL on the Bimpiaga well, thing? Well, let's put it this way. Uh, this administration, despite the fact that we already have an arm, which is a work in progress. Mm -hmm. The ARMM. Mm -hmm. uh, the ARMM, which was the result of the Tripoli Agreement, mm -hmm. which was brokered by Indonesia and approved by 80 Muslim countries, and is now electing its officers. Mm -hmm. It has, it has 15,000 bureaucrats working under it. Mm. Uh, is um, going to be replaced by the by, Basamoro uh, Basa thing. Now, which uh, from what we can see, because the Philippine Council of Foreign Relations is in the forefront of the uh, conscientious objectors mm. in Congress for the, the reason that we didn't find it inclusive enough. You know? okay. And it's a partial solution to a nagging problem, which not only improves Muslim cessationists, but we have uh, people, uh, we, have the, we have the left, we have the communists there, mm. we have bandits, we have private armies there, which resulted in Mamba Sapano yes. um, mm -hmm. counter. Oh, this was the handiwork of so many uh, groups mm. of people, which obviously the MLF were not, was not able to control or contain or manage, mm -mm. which does not give them the right, therefore, to become the sole security force in that area. Okay. Now, what will the BMP Aga do? The BMP Aga will be uh, the, uh, an approach to increasing higher levels of productivity, income and employment for all of the Mindanaoans, regardless of religion, regardless of cultural identities, all that. It will, it will, uh, it will uh, benefit the MILF, the Maranaos, the Maguindanaos, the Tibolis, the Tausugs, everybody there. Mm. It will be inclusive. It will include the Christians, the Lumads. Mm. These are all the stakeholders there. So it will promote the Mindanao promote because the uh, Mindanao will be developed not only by us, mm -hmm. by Filipinos, mm -hmm. but it, it will be developed by, by the Malaysians, mm -hmm. by the Indonesians, the by the Bruneans, mm -hmm. in the same way that we will try to develop also, to the extent that we can, 
uh, their communities in Sabah, in Salawesi, uh, mm -hmm. and all this area. So, so this is the bigger solution. This is, to me, the, 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 the more effective solution to the crisis that, that this administration is trying to, the best fire mm -hmm. this administration is trying to solve mm -hmm. in that island. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the issues uh, uh, on uh, establishing the Asian community is uh, uh, finding the common identity common you know among the peoples of ASEAN yes do you think uh, how is the consciousness of this of the people in, in this area on the Bimpiaga is, is there any consciousness that you know th well th as we mentioned earlier in this program that there there is uh, there is a lot of kinship mm -hmm. among the uh, okay. yeah. Muslims in the Bimpiaga mm -hmm. that's why it is uh, it is uh, mandated to succeed mm -hmm. because of this kinship, mm -hmm. this proximity, this cultural uh, identity mm -hmm. that they enjoy among uh, mm -hmm. each other. You know, so that will facilitate the uh, the uh, progress. The making uh, making the establishment of a community easier than you know. The, taking the whole Asian, for instance, the whole Asian region. It will be so easier. Yes, yeah, more focused. Yeah, different more cultural focused, backgrounds. Uh, yeah, okay. and uh, you know, it's it's bad enough to for uh, to bring together different racial uh, mm -hmm. identities, mm -hmm. as uh, we were discovered in Singapore. Mm -hmm. yes. You have Chinese Malaysian thing, you know, mm -hmm. right? but here the, you you have uh, basically uh, Malay, mm -hmm. uh, Malay, uh, Muslim. Mm -hmm. uh, which will be the majority yes, yes. here with the, with the Christian minority mm -hmm. who will can, can ride on the prosperity mm -hmm. that this uh, BMPA mm -hmm. will throw. So it's a recipe for success. Mm -hmm. uh, and how do you think the, you know, the, the official, the government leaders in this area are addressing the Bimpiaga thing? Are they doing enough to, to promote uh, Bimpiaga? Sad to say, there was a time when if you entered the Department of Foreign Affairs, here in the uh, Ross Boulevard, mm. you will find there a room called North Borneo. Okay. Thing. That's disappeared. <laughs> so where it has gone to, I don't know. If it's still there, if there are still people interested in this. Mm -mm. Uh, uh, and uh, because um, um, there is need really for the government to really focus on this thing. So uh, then we need, um, uh, uh, and uh, an agency, an organization here on our side of the fence, yes. you know, to to focus on this. That's at the national level, but at what do you think at level. the uh, local level? What should they do? At the local level, well, actually, this is leadership, you know. I mean, okay. uh, for example, uh, uh, well, there's already the arm. Yeah, to start with, and then the local governments are very active there in the area, the regions. How many regions? Region ten, mm -hmm. and then they, they can all be uh, brought together, brought together, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then uh, to to focus on this. Uh, thing. That should mm -hmm. not be difficult. So it's really boils down to leadership. What about and the interest. other stakeholders? Oh, business they will, uh, people, you know. Oh, uh, they, everybody will jump in because it's oh. a win-win situation for everyone. It promotes peace, it promotes progress. Yeah, I remember during the Ramos administration, you know, there was so much uh, talk yes. on the Bimpiaga being led by Paul Dominguez yes. uh, and his group. So how are they now? Are they still actively engaged in the promotion of the Bimpiaga? Well, you know, if the, there's a waning of enthusiasm mm -hmm. at the top, I mean, there's a natural tendency for people mm -hmm. at the bottom of the pyramid mm -hmm. to say, well, okay, this and that. Well, what about the business people? Did they stop uh, more active trading? Uh, with the thing? Well, no, that, that, that's going on, but mm -hmm. the, there's need for all of these, uh, the governments involved there, to pu mm -hmm. put in more infrastructure, mm -hmm. to put in more investments, mm -hmm. to pit, put in more uh, regulations, mm -hmm. uh, and controls, mechanisms, all that, to really to mm -hmm. for it to work out. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, there are already in place. Mm 
Yes. This uh, controls. The ADB has come up with a, a whole. Uh, when was set. this? When was this ADB thing? Oh, it's been going on since uh, since the uh, 90s and the late. And, and, and no, it is not caught up. <laughs> and uh, well, they cannot. They can mm -hmm. only come up with solutions. They cannot. Mm -hmm. They cannot convince uh, mm -hmm. the governments to mm -hmm. to follow suit. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have a change of national leadership this year, 2016. And next year, the Philippines will be hosting ASEAN. Yes. So there's more chances for the BIM Piaga thing to be Hopefully. highlighted. So what, what, do you use, uh, what are your recommendations to the next you know, administration? Yeah, I think um, this, uh, I mentioned this at a recent meeting where mm -hmm. the DFA and DTI mm -hmm. people were there. I said, you know, uh, this is the most viable project. Mm -hmm for the ASEAN. The so, Piaga, yeah. so you start with that. Mm -mm. Yeah. And how has how have they uh, I think they did so with a lot of enthusiasm. Mm -mm. If you ask the people below, there is a lot of enthusiasm mm -mm. among the agencies and they have they've been working at this mm -mm. since ninety four. Mm -mm. So that's about uh, how many years that been mm -mm. since almost twenty years they've been mm -mm. at it. And it's just a uh, word go and they're uh, off running. Mm -mm. Okay, uh, what are your final words on uh, being Piaga vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, this peace process <laughs> that's yes. going on? <laughs> okay, um, the, the other side of peace is development. Yes. Okay. You create levels, higher levels of productivity, income, unemployment in Mindanao, mm -mm. you solve the problem of secession, mm -mm. you solve the problem of rebellion, mm -mm. you solve the problem of poverty, you solve a lot of problems. So, uh, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we should really promote uh, Bimpiaga. We should, yes. Okay, mm. okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ambassador yeah. Romero. Okay. The Bim Piaga can continue to play its role as an important building block in the region's economic integration. While much has been achieved, advancing the development potential of Bim Piaga will require a support framework that is anchored on commitments of human and financial resources to cooperate and coordinate at the sub-regional, national and local levels. Given the current developments with the building of the ASEAN community, the potential for the full development of the Bim Piaga into a real growth area that will benefit the four countries involved in the Mindanao region for the Philippines specifically presents a bright promise. Hopefully for our countrymen in the south, this will bring about a cessation of the age-old conflicts in the region that has caused untold human and economic tolls. It is in the best interest of everyone involved to make sure that the Bim Piaga will force ahead and realize its full potential. This is Kaloy Tabunda and I'm one with 25.